Hey, you guys, I'm so, so excited to get to train tonight on what to do and how to support sharers on your team, regardless of their pace or their speed. Um, I'm going to hit a lot of different things tonight, but basically when you walk away from this, you should know what to do with somebody who is closed to the idea of sharing Plexus right now, what you should do with somebody who is open to the idea of sharing Plexus when they have blank whatever result or objection they have, or what to do with somebody that says, hey, yeah, you know what? I am open to making money with Plexus right now. So my goal is when you leave this, you should know what to do with all three of those kind of people. And there's a handy dandy flow chart coming your way, which is also super fun. So hang in, there will be a lot of information, um, but it should wrap up nicely, sign sealed delivered. So let's share my screen. And you guys know this is always kind of, um, it hit or miss. Let's see if I can get it right on the first try. I'm just snazzy. Boom, shakalaka. Okay. I think y'all can see that. Trish, I can see your face. Can you see my screen? All right. Okay. Here it is. A system for supporting potential sharers at their pace. If you're like me, sometimes you do the scary thing of asking somebody, when you love your products, are you going to be telling people about them? You do that because I trained you a few weeks ago to ask every single person that question. As soon as you get them on the phone and enroll them and just edify their decision that they have made a wise choice to get started with Plexus, I tell everybody, say, hey, listen, when you love your products, are you going to be telling people about them? And what I found is the fear around that question usually comes from this idea of, but what do I do if they say yes? Like, oh gosh, what do I do? Or what do I do if they want to make money, but they have this fear or this objection? So I'm going to hopefully teach you what to do with all of those people. Okay, so, but before we get there, I always think before you can teach somebody a skill set, you've got to really paint the picture for why they should care about the skill set, why it's important. And so, first of all, I want you to know um, who are leaders. Some of you are thinking this is really good for Christina. This is really good for Brittany or Krista because they're diamonds and they have this pixie dust on them and they can do all these hard things that make me feel really uncomfortable. And what I want you to know is every skill I'm going to teach you tonight still makes me uncomfortable. I promise still makes me uncomfortable. I had to force myself and I confess this to my jewel sisters tonight. I had to force myself today to get on the phone with somebody that I just enrolled and follow this process because there was some fear around this person. She intimidated me. And so I still get uncomfortable too. The difference between, between me and someone who has not yet reached their goals is the number of times I've been willing to be uncomfortable, regardless of how I feel about it. The number of times I've been willing to trust the process, regardless of how uncomfortable or nervous it makes me. I'm just willing to do it scared, and I'm willing to be a disaster at it before I can become a master at it. So the only thing that's going to keep you from mastering this skill set is practice. So you just got to be willing to be mediocre at it or to not get it right in order to move forward. So who is a leader? Guys, listen, leaders are people who form the future. That can be you. It doesn't say anything about leaders are this rank or that rank. It just says leaders are people who form the future and they can paint highly visual pictures for those that they lead. It means that you're able to look at someone and, and determine not where they are, but where they could be and then articulate that to them. Okay, so what is vision? Well, first of all, I want you to know that I think that the, the vision has to have a foundation of reality, okay? I learned that from John Maxwell. I was gonna take credit for it, but decided that so many of you also love John and you probably would be able to know. So it's from John, but the foundation of vision has to come from reality. So it's a matter of looking at someone or yourself and saying, who am I currently? Where am I currently? What am I currently? And what are we as a team? If, you, if you're not casting vision based off of someone's reality, what you will lose is credibility. So what do I mean by that? I mean, 
some people, you know, based off of who they are, where they are, what they've accomplished, all of, you can look at someone's reality and say, hey, if they're willing to trust the process, this is where they can go very quickly. And there are some people that you can look at them and you say, you know what, they're going to have to learn some skill sets or invest in some relationships, grow their influence. And if they're willing to do that and trust the process, here's where they can get eventually. So what he talks about, and we'll get there in just a second, is being able, before you create a vision statement where you think somebody could end up, be willing to get real um, comfortable with their reality and, and, and look at the future, look at, cast their vision based off of where they are and where you think you can get them to. So I thought that was really relevant because sometimes we want to shy away from telling people that some things are hard. You want to make six figures and have time freedom? It's, it's difficult. You have to build that. It's work. And sometimes we want to rainbow and unicorn it up because we're afraid that if somehow we tell someone the truth, like for you to build this, you might have to get a little uncomfortable. You might face rejection. Sometimes we want to sugarcoat that and not tell them the truth. And the truth is this is hard. Everybody faces rejection. Everybody has to get uncomfortable. Everything you want is just on the other side of that comfort zone. So you have to have, as the leader, the ability to see someone's reality and then paint a picture for them for where they can go. All right. So why should you create energy for your vision? Well, first of all, the energy behind the vision is what's going to determine whether or not you're a leader. Anybody can take the action of casting vision, but only leaders can get people to buy in to their vision. You guys know what book that's from, right? 21 Laws, the law of buy-in. As a leader, you've got to be able to get people to buy in to the vision that you have for them and for your team. So how can you create energy? Right here, identify who you're talking to. Be real clear on who you want to build with. Sometimes my sweet little yellow friends, I'm sure Chris has seen got a bunch of them. Sometimes we feel bad if we have to get real specific on who we're looking for. But guys, if you're looking for everyone, you're looking for no one. Think about it. If you wanted a foot specialist, you would go to a podiatrist. You would not go to a general doctor. Does it mean anything's wrong with general doctors? Absolutely not. But if you want something specific for your foot, you should probably go to the foot doctor. So the general doctor is going to be for every single person, every single thing. Are you going to get specific, deliberate, intentional care on what's the most problematic? Probably not. So just know when you're looking for who you want to build with, if you are trying to build with everyone, you might get a little bit of traction with some people. But if you want to grow financial freedom, then you're going to have to get real clear on the kinds of leaders you want to build with. And that might look different for everybody. And that's okay. Because anybody can do this. But listen, for me to build with somebody, I, there are some things that I look for in them. And so in finding that, in knowing what I'm looking for, I can find common ground amongst us. It's why you tend to see me build with other athletes, people who are into fitness and, and health and wellness. We have common ground there. You see me build with teachers, common ground there. Build with moms a lot. We have a lot of common ground there. So find who you're talking to, identify who it is, and then find that common ground so that you can communicate. Um, breathe life into your vision. If you lack confidence in yourself and in your vision, how can you expect anybody to buy into it? John Maxwell said in the same podcast today, he has very rarely seen a super successful person who lacks confidence in their ability to figure things out. Doesn't mean that you have to be an overly confident person or that you can't struggle with belief in yourself. It just means that for the most part, successful people feel confident that they can figure things out given time, given resources, given chances, they can be successful. Speak positively and speak from your heart. When you're talking to these people, regardless of their pace, they have to know that they're a person. They have to know that they are a person. And then one of the best things I think that my leader does is she makes the intangible tangible. When she first started casting vision for me and what this opportunity could mean for me and my family, her dreams for me felt intangible. I mean, it sounded lovely. I'm not even, I mean, I was a working full-time teacher, was in grad school, had just had our uh, third baby. So I had a nursing newborn. The idea of this 
extra money when we had spent so many years living paycheck to paycheck, um, being comfortable with going further and further into debt when it came for holidays or vacations or whatever. The idea that there was another way was not really tangible for me until she painted a picture. And she did that by showing me other people like me who had done that. She said, look, other people have done it, which means they, you just have to learn what they did and we can do this. And then she also masters the last one, listen first and often. Be really careful to put your own assumptions around something. Be really careful to jump in and just make um, these false stories in your head. Really listen and ask clarifying questions and try to do that from a position of uh, being neutral, right? Not being emotionally attached to what they're saying. Okay. So I really love this. He said, you reveal your potential by where you focus. Your potential is revealed by what you are focusing on. Momentum is created by pointing to what's ahead, by seeing what is coming. I think about people with fitness goals. They're not motivated to not eat carbs and to work out five days a week right now. They're motivated because they know what is coming ahead. They've, they've, had vision casted for what's possible for their physique or their strength or their endurance or whatever. And that's what they're willing to sacrifice now for. Momentum is drained by looking behind at once, at what one's at once bless. Momentum is drained by looking behind at what once was. See, it's a typo there. It's not just me. I can read. It just wasn't typed right. So the, num the number one thing that you can do that's a momentum killer, killer, not killer, is to focus on what was once was. I'm never writing that sentence again. What once was. No matter how glorious or how tragic, the fastest way to drain your momentum for your team is to look backwards. Whether it was like, you guys all know people who do this. Think about the guy, he's a grown man now, 45 years old. You know what he still talks about? That touchdown pass he threw in high school. Anybody know somebody like that? Like the highlight of his life was his touchdown in high school. Like, bro, for 30 years, you hadn't done anything that trumped that. Like, why not? Because he's looking back. So why build energy and momentum? Because you have to have that in order to cast vision, in order to create and propel change in your business. Also, let's go back to Hawaii. Okay. Ooh, if you're focusing on yesterday, that was your best day. Man, I think that's so powerful because sometimes we, um, we, we spend a little too long celebrating a win. Anybody guilty? Spend a little too long celebrating a win and we forget that in order to continue to win, we've got to continue looking forward. So I'm going to get now into the do part. If you guys are like me, you want to know, okay, well, what do I do? All of that sounds great, but what's next? Um, here are some things to expect as we move into this part. What are realistic expectations when dealing with people who have decided to join Plexus? Expect objections. Expect them, welcome them, ask for them, get comfortable with them. The good news is when it comes to objections is there's only a few of them and they never change. I can think of three product objections that I get uh, for the most part repeatedly and mm, three-ish objections for the opportunity. And that's what we're going to talk about mostly tonight is uh, the opportunity, but expect them. You know what I think is more weird than someone having an objection to this business? Someone jumping in and thinking that they're going to be all in from the beginning. Don't ask me the questions. They're ready to rock and roll. I'm over here like, no, no, because listen, we are created skeptical. Like we are, that's just how our mind works. And so I expect people to have questions and objections. And so welcome them. Expect to have to overcome objections numerous times. So many times people will say, well, I told her that once. I'm like, man, I'm so glad Brittany did not stop telling me things once. You guys know that she told me about my potential in this business for an entire year after I was on the products, a whole year. Many of you, when someone told you no to sharing, have never brought it up again. What would my life look like if Brittany had stopped casting vision for me after my first three ignores, my first four no's, my one time when I was like, I mean, I make more money than you, Britt. Like, and I said it nicely. And listen, I don't make more money than her now. Okay. So 
expect to have to overcome them and handle them numerous times. Uh, expect to have to invest in helping people build belief in themselves. If you're waiting to recruit somebody who just has all the natural confidence in the world and you think that will carry them from here to diamond, just know those people do not exist. They don't. I have never struggled with belief in myself ever. But you know what I did struggle with? Belief in the opportunity. So there's three things people have to have belief in. Products, opportunity, and themselves. You're not going to find someone who has belief in all three solid from the beginning and never needs any support. It just doesn't happen. So expect to invest in people to build that belief. Expect to have to counteract objections they're going to get. If you get somebody who's open to doing this and you send them out on their own, expect that they're going to get knocked down. They're going to trip over themselves. They're going to feel discouraged because we all do. The best thing you can do is normalize that. John Maxwell says one of the best things you can do as far as casting vision and supporting people is less hype, more reality. Less at a girl, like we're going to be diamonds all the way together. Let's go. And more reality. My girl, listen, as you're starting out, just know this is what most people run into. And I want to help you support you through that. So come to me with that. Like we can talk about it. It's totally okay. Anything you go through, I promise you, I've probably been through it too. So just know that this is an open door open communication policy. But guys, because objections to them feel like rejection. And it's going to take you as the leader to offer perspective on why it's not a rejection that's personal. Okay, expect to have to lovingly hold people accountable to what they say that they want. You're going to have people and you're going to see in a minute, I categorize them three ways, spectators, walkers and runners, you're going to have somebody who says they want to be one, but then behave more like another. And so it doesn't, it, it's not about shaming them or making them feel bad. It's just about a matter of saying, hey, listen, I know that you said you wanted to be a varsity swimmer. And here's like, here's what that looks like to be a varsity swimmer. And I noticed and said that you're more so like going at a rec swimmer space. Like, is that, is that kind of more what you want to, what you want to do? Just asking questions. I don't know why I picked a swimmer. I don't even know if there are varsity swimmers, but just be willing to hold people accountable to what they say they want by asking questions that are them focused. They cannot feel like you are expecting or worse, needing them to do what you want them to do. That builds bitterness and um, it's just not a good look. It's just not a good look. Be okay with the fact that some people, when they realize that this requires work, may decide it's not for them. That's okay. You know what I decided wasn't for me? Law school. Does it mean law school's bad? No, it does not. It's just not for me. This may not be everyone's cup of tea. And the best thing you can do is lovingly support them um, and, and, and be honest. Remember, less hype, more honesty. Less hype, more honesty. Set realistic expectations for what it will take to get their desired results. And if what it will take feels like too much to them, help them alter what they can do and then give realistic expectations for what they can expect there. People don't mind the hard work or having to wait for the gratification as long as they know it's coming. So be realistic. Okay, and then the speed out of the gate does not indicate someone's long-term success. I've seen it a million times. I'm sure Britt has, Krista has. See people who come out of the gate and they fly and you think, oh man, must be nice to be them. They're gonna be diamond in no time. And then they hit a wall. They don't participate in growth and they sputter out. I've seen people who come out of the pace, out of the gate crawling. I mean, crawling. And you're like, man, are they ever going to do anything? And then you know what happens? They grow and they learn and they connect and they're coachable. And they are the ones that have long-term sustained business. So I've seen it both ways. I've seen people who have flown, who have grown and who have kept flying. And I've seen people who crawled who won't grow and who never go anywhere. So just know they're all different paces. There's all different realities of what it looks like to get where you're going. And none of, none of them indicate your long-term success. What does is your consistency and your discipline, not your speed out of the gate. Okay, so next steps. Here's what we're gonna dive into. Spectators, they're not open to making money right now. Those are the ones that on the call, like they're real cold. You can tell, okay, terrible idea. Like. Clearly not for her right now, whatever. For the record, I don't really believe everyone, anyone's ever not open. I've only ever had one person 
tell me that she needs nothing that Plexus has to offer because she has millions of dollars in her bank account. And then she sent me a screenshot of it. Um, other than that, I, have, I don't believe that. I believe that people have such big limiting beliefs that they can't see potential yet. But I, I mean, anyway, so spectators, they're not open currently. Walkers, probably, but I need my own results first. Or probably, but I'm not a salesperson. Or probably, whatever, fill in the blank. And then runners who say, yeah, actually, I have thought about doing something like this, or I am open to making that 400 and something dollars, or, you know, yeah, actually, so-and-so has already come to mind that I thought might need these products. So three different people, this is where we're going to go. Everybody ready? Here we go. Okay. Spectators. And listen, this builds upon. So we're going to start with spectators. Whatever we do with spectators, you'll do that, plus the next thing with walkers. And then for runners, you'll do spectators, walkers, and then runners. Can we all agree with that? Kind of like when you learn how to run, you don't stop crawling or walking, like you just build upon it. So spectators, start them on the retention system. Plug them into a system to help them love their products. You are one product lover away from a new business builder. Even someone who's not open at all, when they love their products, you guys, it is impossible for them not to share. So start them on a retention system day one. And if you have new level twos joining your team, connect with your level one and make sure they know how to use the retention system. They've seen the retention system modeled for them if you're following it. If you're not following it, then you're creating double work because now you have to go teach your level one a system that they never got to see. So it's not unovercomable, but just start today. If you're not using a retention system, use it. Freedom team, you guys know where it's at. It's under the customer care in our team page. So utilize it and make sure your team is utilizing it. It's not okay for you to be the only one utilizing it. Ask questions, make sure your team is. And then build a relationship with them. For somebody who's not open to making money, they need to feel connected with. And so that looks like connecting about things outside of Plexus. Ask them what they have planned for the holidays. Continue to build a relationship with them as you're following that retention system. And then continue to drip seeds about the opportunity as they notice positive results. Man, I'm so glad that you're sleeping so much better. Like I am so excited. That's one of the first things that people notice. And I'm so pumped that you're already there. Hey, listen, I, I, I know that you said you weren't open to this, but do you know there are people in your life who are literally praying for relief from that very thing? And you've got something that could help them. And I know if you're like me, like I just can't keep something good to myself. So curious, like, are you open to me sharing with you how you can share with them in a way that feels genuine? No, still no. Okay, cool. Listen, keep in mind when you decide that you're ready. And I promise I'm always, when you decide you're ready, this is how much money you can make when you grab your first three people. And then I move into, in the meantime, what do you guys have planned for Christmas? Because I'm going back to building my relationship. So I will repeat this process with a no person over and over and over and over again. It doesn't ever stop. This is what Brittany did with me for an entire year after she had already followed up with me about the products. I was already on the products. She followed this system over and over with me, over and over in different ways. So sometimes she would drip seeds about the opportunity by sending me a picture of her check or telling me what it was paying for that month or telling me about the trip she had just went on with Plexus. So be strategic on how you do that, but just do it. And then keep up with what, who you're doing it with. I guarantee you, I was in a planner or something on Brittany's desk. It would say, follow up with Christina about opportunity. Just be intentional, okay? All right. So for walkers, you're gonna follow the steps from the spectators. And this is all on a flow chart, you guys. And then you're also going to gauge their objections. You're gonna know their objections because you're gonna ask every single person, when you love your Plexus products, are you going to be sharing it with people? Guys, if you're not doing that, just know the people that you're looking at saying, I wish I had what she had. She is doing that repeatedly with every person. And she's asking her team how it's going when they do it. So if you notice that Sally just got a new join, you're going to say, Sally, how did it go enrolling that girl on the phone? Oh, awesome. I love that. So what was her answer to the question? We call it the question. My people know what it is. So remember, it's your job to tap root and help your team. If they're not asking the question, let's talk about it. 
Tell me why you're not asking that. It's generally fear, okay? But we gauge their objections and then we're going to use third-party resources of someone else with the, the same objection being successful at it. Girl, listen, I, listen, I was just like you. I totally understand how you feel like there's not a spot on your plate to add anything else to. But listen, what you might be just amazed to find out like I was is it's not a massive amount of time that you need. It's just a massive amount of intentionality with learning a few skill sets. Could I send you a video of my friend so-and-so? She's just like us, a teacher, and she built this thing while teaching. Like, I think you'd relate a ton with her story. So I'm going to build her belief in her ability by specifically talking to her objections or her hurdles. Okay. I'm going to add them to the team page. Obviously spectators, same thing. I'm going to invite them to participate in upcoming events. I'm going to invite them to a vision casting call. We have those once a month. Um, you could also just do a small vision casting call. If you have a leg on your team and they've added five people, just do a private vision casting call where you jump on and, and just share, share with people what's possible. I'll invite them to product events. And you guys say, well, why would you invite a product user to a product event? Guys, you know what keeps a lot of people from sharing? A lack of belief in the products. They're waiting for their own results because that what they're saying is, I don't know yet if I believe enough to put myself out there. So the more stories they can hear, the more testimonies they can be a part of, the higher their belief is built. And when someone's belief is high, when they hear for the third time that it's helped somebody with their mama's same health problem, then you know what they're going to do? They're going to share with their mama, finally. So that third-party validation is so, so important. And then again, when they start to love something about their products, follow up with them. Follow up with them. And like I said, just continue to ask that question like, hey, listen, I know that you were open to making that $400 when you got your own products. Now that you've gotten your products and you realize how simple it is to fit it into your routine, have you given any more thought to other people who might also be open to trying this? So you see how that has nothing to do with results. Now that you've got your products, it comes in a nice little fancy box. It's so nice. Now that you see how simple it is to fit in, now that you see that it's not really scary, it's real simple, have you thought any more about sharing? So just being willing to continue to ask the questions. Okay, and now this is what I was the most shocked to find was that more people were struggling with what to say when someone said yes than anything else. This blew my mind. And I realized it was a leadership gap that I had had. So let's say you have somebody that says, yes, I'm open to sharing. This has actually happened to me three times this week. Um, people enroll and they're yes. And I find myself going, okay, well, what do I do next, right? So here's what you do. You follow the steps from the spectators and the walkers. And then I'm just connecting. I'm on the phone. I'm saying, girl, listen, tell me how much money like would be a blessing for you and your family this month. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't ask this next question, but I'm thinking based off of their answer. Okay. Are they thinking kind of small right now? Like they just want to cover the cost of their products or like, are they talking about, man, I'd love to cover a car payment. One of the answers I got this week was I'd really love some support with Christmas. Like I want to be able to have a nice Christmas and we don't really have extra. And so some extra at Christmas would be great. And you know what I did? I asked what she'd buy with it. Like, oh, okay. What would you buy? Like, what's on the list of your babies that if you, if you do this, if you go silver or if you go senior silver, like what is it on the list that you could buy? And how would you feel to get to buy that? Like for that to be wrapped under the tree, not on a credit card, how would you feel? Guys, that is casting vision, painting a picture of what it would look like for someone to do that. And then here's the kicker, no matter what they say, whether they're thinking real small right now or really, really big, you just say, girl, listen, Plexus absolutely can do that. And whether you make what they're dreaming yet or not is irrelevant because you know people who do. You guys have access to Brittany and I, you know us, you know that we are people who have just learned the skills and practice over and over and over again. So you can tell somebody in confidence, girl, that is possible here. And that is actually just the beginning of what is possible here. Okay. So very next thing. And all three of my girls who said they wanted to make money have done this. They watched the getting started video. Now it's, it needs to be redone. We're in the process of redoing it. It's a couple of years old at this point. But the meat of it is still the meat of it. At the end of the day, when the video is redone, what the meat is still going to be there. Okay. It gives them a really realistic picture of what it will look like to do this. It casts vision for them. It builds belief in products for them. It gives them actual 
um, tangible steps to go take. I have people when they watch that video, they're off posting and messaging people without me ever even having to intervene. By the time I check back in the next day and say, hey, how did it go watching that video? They've either watched other videos or they're already in activity. So use that getting started video. Help them craft a first post. I don't mean tag them in a few examples in the team page and send them on their way. You want their first post to be something that they're proud of, that they feel confident in. And it sounds like them. It's genuine. It might take you 15 or 20 minutes of your time to craft it with them, but I'm telling you it is worth it. And then set expectations for the post. Do not let them think that going and making that post is going to be enough to generate the joins needed to go silver. It's just not reality for most people. Some people come in this and have no social media at all. No presence, no influence. That was me. Brittany let me understand posting on social media was simply an invitation for people to follow my journey. It didn't have to um, bring about people knocking down my inbox trying to find out what I was doing. It was just a simple way of saying, this is what I'm doing. Here's why I'm excited about it. Here's what you can expect. And, and, and then being consistent with doing that. But had I thought, man, no one commented or no one came to me. I must not be good at this. That would have been really a Debbie Downer. So set expectations for that post for them before they post it. Okay. And then go ahead and get them talking to you about who they're going to start to share with. I always ask people, great, who are we going to start talking to? Great. Your sister, Sally. Awesome. Are we going to talk to her about the products, the business or both and get her to tell you why she thinks Sally needs to be approached. And then you help them craft a message again, that is genuine, that they can feel confident about that. They can go and send out and feel proud of what they have done. And then check in with them often for feedback from messages and the videos that they're watching. If you have them watching a how to go silver video, ask questions. Tell me what stood out to you on that video. Oh, cool. Why do you think that? If they, if, if you ask them, Hey, have you sent out any, you know, had any conversations today? And they say, yeah, I sent out five messages. I would say, Oh my gosh, I'd love to see what you said. Love to see if there's anything that I can just tweak or, you know, how, tell me how many people have responded. Oh, you had a 10% response rate. That is totally normal and average. So you're just asking a bunch of questions so that you can offer perspective. Um, get them to go through the getting silver, the going silver guide. We have it in our team page. It has a couple of different videos in there. Five steps to silver. Get them to take ownership of their learning and their growth. We start setting that growth mindset expectation from the beginning. If somebody wants to come in and build this. I want them to know that they're empowered to go and learn and dig in and, and figure some things out. And then invite conversation with them. Guys, you can't know how somebody's doing if you're not connecting with them. You won't find this out in a text message. You won't find this out in Messenger. It's so important when you have somebody who wants to go off on a running start that you are there hand-holding every step of the way for the first several months, really. Until somebody's gold, senior gold. I mean, I know what it feels like to take three steps forward and two steps back. Three steps forward, two steps back. Have a great day and enroll two people and the next day get made fun of. Like, I understand what that feels like. And for a new person, what's going to help propel them over that hurdle is going to be somebody coming alongside of them and grabbing their hand and jumping the hurdle with them. And that's your responsibility. If you want to empower someone to be successful here, you've got to be willing to get dirty in the trenches with them. You just have to be. Okay, as for screenshots, I already said that. Um, Remember, don't feel guilty about asking to be involved. They want to be successful. They picked you for a reason. They want to be successful here. And so you have a responsibility. Think about it this way. If I were a doctor and I were in I don't, surgery school, the doctor wouldn't just watch me operate afraid to ask any questions. The supervising surgeon would have a lot of questions. And when needed, he would get his hands in that body cavity with me. It doesn't mean that I'm not good. It means I'm learning. And as a learning surgeon, I'm real grateful for his expert hands in that body cavity with me when things feel a little bit sketchy. So have confidence in your ability to support. And then, guys, this is so important. I don't care if you have 75 runners come out of the gate this month. Your job is to duplicate and recruit both every month. You cannot say, well, I'm focused on helping my team this month. That's why I, I didn't recruit. Mm -mm. That's called management. 
And management mode will crush you. You want to create leaders and also be recruiting. Got to do both every single month. Until you are a stable, happy, secure diamond, then you don't have an option. If you want to be successful here, you have to recruit and you have to duplicate. That's just the bottom line. Remember when I said less hype, more honesty? There's your honesty. You have to. If you're unwilling to learn the skills to do that, then your, your success here will be limited. Good news is it's a skill set that anybody can learn if you're hungry enough to grow and change. Okay, you don't know how someone is doing until you reach out and ask. I already said this. Invite conversation with them. Be on the phone with them every couple of days. Ask screenshots. Offer constructive feedback. Okay, so this was the first flow chart that I gave you. We're not going to spend a lot of time here. I'm just going to remind you um, of what we talked about before. Step one, make a personal connection. This is on the phone. If it's a total stranger, if it's your best friend, if it's your mama, I don't care. This is on the phone. Ask some questions, validate that they're going to love their products. And then you ask the question, if you loved these products, would you be telling people about them? Here are the three categories, not open, probably, but, or yes, I would love to make money. You see here, step three is how I handle the most common objections. So I, I have this for you. I will give it to you if you don't have it, but we're going to get into the next one because we're short on time. So here are our next steps. Once you followed that flow chart to completion, then here are your next steps. It's a little bit fuzzy for some reason. Um, okay, this is what we just talked about, but this is consolidated, nice and pretty in one paper. It's literally the same thing. So we're not gonna read it, but I want you to know when you print this out, front and back, front, back, front, back, okay? Guys, and then this is to, to really drive the nail home. The future is the time where you will wish you had done what you're refusing to do now. The future is the time where you will wish you had done what you're refusing to do now. There are some of you who are refusing to ask the question. You're nervous, you're intimidated. We laugh it off and say, next time we will. But guys, you know what is really scary? The future comes much faster than most of us realize. And if you want your future to, to look different than your present, then what you're doing presently must change. So just decide, I'm going to do that hard thing. I'm going to, for me, the hard thing was being on the phone. I really felt so maxed with my time when I first started this, that when Brittany kept telling me, guy, get on the phone and connect, Christina, guy, get on the phone and connect, Christina. I'm like, I don't know when to do that. And she's like, listen, if you want this bad enough, here's what it's going to take. And so I got real creative, y'all. I would do calls in the car on the way to school at 7.15 in the morning with other moms who were also headed to school. I just got super creative because when you want something bad enough, you will find a way. If you don't, you will find an excuse. And I'm here to tell you that somebody somewhere with your exact same excuse has overcome it. So it's just a matter of if you will. It's a matter of if you will. There's a system. There you have it. That's what I have for you guys. I hope it is helpful. Let me 